put it. Uh, being one of the largest uh, out of home advertisers in the country, uh, whether it's 5% of your budget or 6% of your budget, really it doesn't matter. The, uh, the number we are talking that you spend on out of home is significant. Right? Um, there are 20 other ways you can spend that money. Right? But yes, year on year, uh, we see Hyundai uh, being a significant player in the, in the out of home business. So, um, is this because you have faith in the medium? Uh, is this because you believe that the medium does deliver even for a, a large category like large competitive categories like automobiles? Or do it or, or do you do it because everybody other automobile company in the country is doing it and therefore we need to be there? And that's question number one. Second is um, from a twenty twenty vision perspective, what changes would you like to see in the auto home industry to convince you to spend more money in that media? Good evening and good evening my fellow uh, panelists and good evening for everybody who is here. Uh, you know I uh, hate to talk about industry. So whenever we talk of any study, whenever we talk of any uh, you know, business, the first thing which strikes to me and I think probably every industry is going to do is talk about numbers. So when you talk about the first question which you ask, let me give you some background to how this industry has been evolving over a couple of years. Uh, last four or five years if you see from 2008 to 2013, uh, well, the OH industry probably has been growing at an annual CAGR of around 520 to 6%. Whereas the industry on a whole, as an enterpriser, was growing at around 10 to 12%. Now, it was also shared with us in the opening address that last year we saw growth of around 12%. From 2013 to 2014, the growth in the OH industry was at 14%. And this year also from 2015 to 2016, the growth probably would be at around 12%. And going by the statistics, I think the industry expects that the growth in the OH business would probably be more than double digit growth in the next five years. Now, having said that, why is it that I, as an advertiser, would like to put these dollars in certain uh, you know, mediums, would like to be averse from the OH? And that's precisely why even our budgets, our planning, and our focus on the OH has increased over the couple of years. I'll be very honest with you that, you know, uh, we work on calendar year in terms of our budget allocations. And when we used to be given some kind of a budget, say 100 rupees overall in terms of marketing spend, uh, the first set of money should be given to the advertising that is a typical TV, then it goes to the press, then it goes to some kind of out of, uh, you know, the, the board activation. And then at the end, we used to say, yeah, no budget, no expense. So that was the fact with which we emerged in the earlier part. But today, and I'll be very honest with you that today it is our top management who gets involved in sharing that what kind of budgets should be given to OH and what kind of sites should be given. And in fact, I would be very happy to share with you today from our perspective, and I think uh, Mr. Ravir is uh, you know, confided with me that today, the last 15 days, a decision to buy two sites from Times OH at two major airports was taken in fact by the enterprise. So that shows the confidence what we as an advertiser have started putting in the OH business. But I think that's not the end of the game. There are many of the challenges which are there. And the challenge which you, second question is, the challenge first is from the advertiser. I think there are some questions which we as an advertiser need to ask. Probably something that OH was a medium wherein the money was put by the advertiser and then it was forgotten. I can tell you today there are sites in the city of Delhi which were directed to share some medium or some event happening. But today the event has gone, the event is over, but still those over sites are still, uh, you know, erected. That should be kind of focus what many enterprises are having in this medium. I think if we evaluate our own strategies and see where the money has to go in the right manner, I think one of the very nice strategies could be in the OH medium. Uh, thanks to the uh, honorable government and in the last two years, the growth which has come has largely come because of the improvement in the infrastructure. Today when we talk of airports, I think we have not only in the major cities, but even the tier two and tier three towns, we are having very good infrastructure coming up in the airports. We are talking of transit media, we are talking of metros coming in small areas, we are talking of having uh, multi-modal transport, we are talking of having you know, cluster buses, we are talking of a very, very honorable fleet management. So all these things, I think, going forward, will 
So the third point, uh, you know, I think with the uh, with the agency and the creative uh, point which you asked, I think look, what has been happening is that, that maybe the clients are guilty of that because finally uh, we are responsible for all the advertising that we buy. Um, the advertising that goes up in the outdoor is not thought of differently from the way that it has been thought of for any other medium. So generally the TV ad gets made, there is a press ad that gets made, and then there is some junior creative or an art director who makes the adapt uh, sitting in a studio overnight and says, here is what a uh, horizontal wording, and here is what a vertical wording, and here is a two is to one, and here is a three is to one, and here is a one by three, and this is what it looks like, and from the goes out. Many times I think the sellers also feel frustrated because you know, the client is spending a huge amount of money on a particular side and it's just plain vanilla launching so and so, launching it by then, etc. They could have done or utilized that site much better. So I think some responsibility lies us, lies with us as clients as well. On the consumer side, I think look, consumers are increasingly I'm seeing a trend where around the world, you know, consumers are rejecting one way or passive advertising. So, you know, with the coming of, um, you know, all of us are uh, hearing about the launch of Reliance Geo and how data is going to become cheap and there's going to be 10 GB per user. Yesterday I was, a, I was at a meet in the evening and uh, one of the Reliance Geo people who have obviously access to this technology on his phone, he was showing me a whole program schedule like a Tata Sky on his phone. And you can click it and you can see a virtual program sitting anywhere where you want. So they have, you know, this kind of revolutionary stuff which is going to happen as a result, you can imagine, uh, with data becoming cheaper and mobile devices being used now for entertainment. Already, you know, in my city in Australia, I mean, and Ruben sort of shared this data with us, that 50% of consumers who are watching television, they have one other screen in front of them at the same time. Either they're in front of an iPad, or they're in front of a phone, or they're doing something else. So already, there is a huge amount of, you know, fragmentation happening. So you are dealing with a very, very competitive cycle. So one's got to be sort of cognizant of that and create something which is interactive and not passive, uh, you know, from a, from a consumer standpoint. And then they'll engage. Yeah. Thanks, Anu. Um, Sarandi, your point of view, uh, from a completely different perspective, I guess. Where at the end of the day, everyone who's spoken so far has been passionately involved in some way or the other, either as a user or a seller or an expert or an agency or whatever. Uh, tell us from what I would think a rather neutral perspective at the same time from what you understand about the industry and observe what is your sense on this. Right, I'm also just wondering why am I sitting out here with these guys? Okay, they're all experts, right? Uh, I shouldn't be sitting without them. I should be like here hearing you guys out. Uh, I actually don't like standing out there. I should be like here under the feet of Dr. Lali and be learning out more with him out here. So, uh, good evening guys. My name is Dr. Sarandi and uh, you know, I'm from Stanford and I specialize in human behavior. <coughs> human behavior and advertising. Okay. Now, um, imagine a world where you pass by a supermarket and all of a sudden, the most liked brand that you have been buying consistently on the next screen, it kind of like starts to show up that it's on the fourth rack. All of a sudden, that you're walking by and on your mobile phone, something beeps up by saying, this is the discount thing that you are the most likely buyer of. Think of it, if there's a hoarding out there and you look at it, and the color of the hoarding changes to a smile. I don't know, you know, it's a, it's a blue sky thinking and, and, and all that I've been hearing out here is what the industry is currently doing and you're like this kids out here. Now how many people are here are like really creative people by the way? Oh boy. Okay, one, two. Oh, all right. Uh, so yeah, you've been very creative and asking questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, I can see the sweat out there as well. So. Sure, uh, Dr. Lal doesn't raise his hand though, but uh, you know, I really very, very creative person. How many of you have heard of this thing called as disruptive technology? Ever heard of this thing called as disruption? It's become a really cliche word these days. Think disruptive beta. You know, you will change the world. Have you ever heard about this one? By your bosses? Yeah, and they keep telling you, take initiative. You know, think out of the box. And you think, but boss, what do I think out of the box about this OS? It's just the same. That's where you're going to lose your mind. Uh, boss, you want to ask me to use my mic? Happened to anybody? Don't raise your hand if your boss is sitting out here. Alright, fair enough. The question is, guys, from your OOH perspective or from an 
advertising perspective, what stops you from a disruptive thinking? What do you think are the clear deliverables of an OOH campaign today? Anyone? So Parnal is going to give you some gifts, I'm sure, when you answer, right? Yes, sir. What do you think are clear deliverables of an OOH campaign? Oh boy, that is intense. Can you simplify that for mere mortals like me? Sales. Right, so number one is sales. Anything else? Recall. Recall. Fair enough. Anything else on why would an organization like Hyundai, and by the way, there's a very interesting story about Hyundai, uh, you know, uh, which we did not tell you about. Four years back, Economic Times carried a story by Malini, if I remember correctly, where she says that um, Maruti is the number one leader, and at that point of time, Hyundai was number two, and it says that number two space in the motor world is empty, it will be taken over by Tata's or Mahindra's. Am I right on that? Fantastic. Four years back, things changed. Uh, Hyundai was selling at roughly at about 30,000, keep me honest up here, sir. 30,000 units per uh, month, four years back. Today, they are selling 33% more units, that is about 48,000 units. Right? They're doing something right. And uh, what he has also not told you is that they've done a deal with BCCI, like honest again, sir, uh, where for the next four years, all the matches in India plays, they will be seen there. Why would they do it? What is this disruptive thinking, guys? Is anyone thought about it? When your boss says, create an OOH campaign, yeah. Like, you know, you just heard, <laughs> create a holding, two by three, but what are the things that are Control C, control V, whatever he said. So, uh, you know, the technical environment. So, how many of, of you have made holdings out here for the OOH campaign? How many of you have done that? Were you guys are just drifting or what? <laughs> okay, where are, where are the OOH people out here? Okay, so look at the seriousness of OOH then in this room. You guys are all from advertising, right? Do you think your customers that why is only 10% of the budget is being allocated to OOH and 10% is from in only in France? 10% is only in France, right? Yeah? So India is going to be what? 5%. 5% budget allocation from the clients. Who's to be paying? Yeah, that's the easy one. The client. The client doesn't know anything. Um, and uh, the advertising, uh, you know, the director and everybody. I only do what my client tells me to do. Yes or no? <laughs> and I only do what my boss tells me to do. You know, what is, what is this industry that is headed towards, guys? You know, what are the top three behaviors that is guiding your industry today? Anyone? I'm going to give you a prize for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's that? I love it, Mokhtar. Actually, she's laughing at me. But what are the top three kind of, uh, principles according to you that are governing your industry today? Follow the boss? So I put it as fear. Number one principle that is guiding you is fear. But look at Dr. Lal and his story. You know what is a disruptive thinking, guys? What's disruptive thinking? You know, it was the first car made, by the way. Well, who made it? Ha! Ah, right. So Ford never made the first car. Car Benz in 1886 was made the petrol car. You know, why do you remember the name of Ford, by the way? But why do you remember him? Absolutely. He was the first guy to disrupt the thinking because. When Carl Benz made the car, it was only meant for the specialists and the rich, rich people. And the horse carriage industry said, <laughs> nothing is going to change for us. But the day Ford came up with the production line, everything changed. He made something which was called cheaper, faster, and better. Now, how many of you guys actually think from your customer's customer perspective to make things cheaper, faster, and better? Do you see, do you see the Lal Pathlab story? How many of you buy the Ford today use? Lab labs for your, you know, blood test and everything. It's just it's a cost thing to come to your mind. So, good campaign by you, so, you know. But, but that's the hard work, that's the vision, that's the disruptive thought process. My question to you guys would be, what would it take for you to be disrupted? There is a good like, guy sitting out there who says, we realize the power of OOH. What does it tell you? What does it tell you, right? Customers are willing to listen. Customers are willing to experiment, but who will teach them? But you are governed by fear. Yeah. Oh, all 
this together. I think uh, kind of bang on. You know, if you, I just wanted to touch one at the beginning. I forgot about it. I think it's uh, you know, if you look at the entire media space today, you know, TV, print, radio. Uh, we want to discuss radio. Radio is also a big component. Radio and out of home. Uh, the out of home industry is considered to be the least glamorous, if I can use the word, of the industries. And unfortunately, a lot of uh, peaceful graduates, you know, uh, get lured by what is the imagery which is being portrayed. You know, television is associated with you know uh, brand, you know, the Ranbir Kapoor's and the Deepika Padukones of the world. But uh, an out of home is considered to be holdings, you know, something which is, and that's a that's a huge challenge. Uh, and I, I can talk about uh, the Times Group. Uh, for the last four years, we have uh, developed a very strong uh, peaceful. Uh, uh, an MBA program for recruiting people from uh, the top uh, B schools. Uh, some of them are sitting here uh, in the crowd. We recruit from good schools like Micah uh, and uh, no, we have not been able to get the top end because we cannot afford those kinds of salaries. Having said that, there is a program in place for the last five or five years now. We are running it successfully, and I think it's one of the biggest differentiators which can happen in the market going forward. You are absolutely bang on, sir. I completely disagree with you when you say there's no glamour. They have Ranbir, we have Argo, right? And we have Ranbir, don't so forget. It's a very clever industry, so let's not forget that. Don't forget the industry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, questions that you have for this um, extremely excited panel, as you can see. And of course, the subject is such that uh, you know, we can keep um, debating and having the medium. We're trying to make the medium more accountable and more measurable. Questions? Yes, I will. I don't know. Uh, does it you know? Has the toss happened? Unfortunately, my phone is on switch off mode. So we can keep uh, you yeah. updating on that. Right now, there's no. Uh, right now, we're going to be questions. taking questions from the audience. Request you to please raise your hand, identify yourself and the company that you represent, and specific panelists that you want to. <laughs> oh, thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. The rest of these one that toss and going to poll, just in case. Good evening, very nice session, Dr. Energy. My name is Aparna Sarawki, I'm from RBS, nothing related to marketing. Okay, so as a customer, I'm sorry I don't trust you guys. Okay, you put holdings, you put Facebook ads, something, we don't trust you. Like, that trust has been lost, and we all know that. I trust if my friends come and recommend to your die or any other product, right? So people tend to trust people like me. Okay, citizen journalism. So, how are you getting to that? Um, I think this is slightly off the target in terms of what we're discussing tonight, in terms of specifically of out of home media. It's, uh, I don't know if any one of the panelists, maybe the brands would like to address that, but I think this is slightly. I'll, I'll, I'll try and. Uh, okay. uh, I'll just try one. I think, I think you are right, uh, and I think there is uh, a lot of work needs to happen in the industry to uh, get the trust back, uh, not from the consumers, but from the advertisers. But which I just talked about in the past. But having said that, it is we have a very strong powerful clients here who believe in the media. Uh, to create citizen journalists, I think there are various means and mechanisms which have been tried. If you look at the Delhi airport, for example, you would go and see uh, a Volvo lounge. Uh, a Volvo has created a lounge where you can touch and feel the car, you can understand about it. So maybe a customer who has, or a person who does not have a car, but who has gone and touched and felt the car there, would have come out and told you that, sorry, what was your name? Aparna, we have, you know, I just saw the XC60, you know, in the Volvo lounge. It looks wonderful, feels good. Maybe tomorrow, wearing him or her, you might go and have a try. So there are various means. There is no direct way of you know, getting the citizen journalists out. But the more experiential uh, marketing that we can create in these areas, <coughs> that would create probably a surrogate of the citizen journalism and everything they're talking about. So experiential marketing, engaging with the customer, and that's where the out
the rural so, sector. Uh, just to uh, just to complete, uh, even if you try and do, say, kind of traditional marketing, if you get a computer screen or a quick screen that you put at the airport or something, or when you have large screens, it's in here. Like, if you, even if you have a small, uh, you know, security camera installed, go with the question? Right. 
I would know of the uh, of a toothpaste uh, marketer who has uh, involved all the local the village guys in terms of some education related to teeth, etc. At the end of it, they had a picture taken, and that picture was then put on the local voting. So there is a lot of localization that happens in these villages, but the reason why we replicated it across a lot of sites was because it is in back. So uh, while there is an infra infrastructure and uh, challenge, uh, wherever there is availability, I think advertisers also will need to do justice to the sentiment and not uh, also you know, use the same paintbrush in these areas. Um, uh, uh, have you ever been to a rural area to check out the OOH? Or when was the last time? Oh, you haven't. So I uh, request you to do that because then you will see the impact of OOH. What happens is that the dynamics may be different in the uh, rural sector versus the urban one, which typically means that your entire home could be painted by an organization and they kind of like put the name across and hope my clients are doing that as well, so I know that. Uh, your shutter of your shop could be painted by them and uh, the urban sector goes. So there's a different dynamic going on out there. So they kind of like impact in the rural way. That's the products that are being used out there. So that's the impact to the audience perspective, I guess that's, that's why I say that. I agree, yeah. I agree with most of what has been said that levels of revolution are different between urban and rural. Rural is in a different stage of revolution out of home, but I can tell you Unilever, Hindustan Unilever spends a lot of money on out of home in rural, uh, in rural India in creating new medium. They create a hell of a lot of new medium and they invest in it. But yes, you are right, it's not digital in, in nature as of now because it's at a different stage of uh, evolution and it will, it will follow suit very soon. But as of now, there is a lot of investment and focus. Uh, in those meetings. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Hi, this is Anna from the Times Group. Um, <coughs> doctors think uh, we are media stepchildren. So while we do. We as in you and me? No, all of us here. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. so while we do a lot of disruptive stuff, we've, we've done things for uh, the Mumbai Marathon and the Delhi Marathon. My segments have been put on the hoarding of a hotel industry where the rooms have been created. Uh, there's a lot of disruptive stuff, uh, stuff happening, but essentially this still remains a very price-driven industry. So the point is that we may, be, we may not have the same kind of risk appetite that our mainline cousins do, but a lot of the owners stays with the clients as well, because till date it is it's a very price-driven industry. What's your name, Tena. Tena. Uh, it's a mindset. It's a paradigm. And I've seen many a paradigm changing in the last 20 years across industries. And uh, I do consult across startups and I've seen a lot of things changing. And I can tell you in the last five years, the only thing is that in India, uh, things come in about 10, 15 years late. That's about it. But trust me on this one, in 2020, you will be seeing some smart things really happening out here. And uh, you know, if we both live until 2025, don't be surprised that there could be some chips that are embedded out here, which kind of like connect between you and me. And I tell you, I've attended a conference in US where there were smart chips given to us on the card. So we just had to shake hands and the entire information got changed. Uh, and I just had to load it into the computer. Now, coming to your point of view, yes, we are price sensitive. But in India, where everything is price sensitive. It's not in here. You know, you will always sell because you are cheaper, you are faster, and you are better. My, my point of view that I urge the advertising industry is that, sure, what you're talking about is disruptive thinking. Take it to the next level. Because your boss today doesn't see value because a client may not see the value, but it is for people like you to move from the stepchildren's mindset to say that I am the power and I'm going to change it. It doesn't matter whether I'm the you know sister from the same mother or from a different mother. Yeah, but it has to be very mutual. Absolutely, that is something you do not educate the client for the power of OH. Let me tell you. Uh, last year, according to my data, housing.com was the number one OOH spend master. And going forward, most of the startups are going to go for OOH and not for television, for other stuff. There's going to be a sea change, and if the advertisers are not hearing this change, they will be left behind. Was that the reason housing.com landed itself into so much trouble? Um, you know, look at look at all the startups they are in red, but that doesn't mean that they will be in red. You've got to be internally optimistic. There's a, there's a strategy going behind it, but sure, the money is going to come in advertising. So, um, thank you. Uh,
Ladies and gentlemen, I think you heard um, some very high energy discussion. I think you heard some uh, some very uh, views that you shared, some very radical views, some very different views. Um, we've tried to put forward a perspective on this subject. I think uh, one thing you will find across this discussion was uh, there was hardly any negativity about the auto home industry, uh, which I'm glad uh, in this discussion did come through. It was very easy uh, for us to berate ourselves. Uh, and I think, thank you, clients, uh, for also not uh, uh, berating us. There's been a lot of hope. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, yes, the guidelines that we need to remember is, of course, may be repetitive, like somebody was mentioning, but it is we need to make ourselves more accountable. Measurability I won't get into in some way, whatever way, surrogate way, whatever way this medium has to become more accountable. It has to become more with it in terms of technology. There has to be more investment from uh, media partners. There has to be more appetite from clients. There has to be more expertise from agencies. So I think it has to be a combination of all three that has to make this medium uh, grow much faster and give it its due share uh, because we all know, and I think everybody in this room will agree that the medium works. The medium works. The medium works on the consumer's mind at whatever level. Sometimes at a subliminal level, sometimes at a, at a deep rooted level, sometimes in a very direct way. So uh, it is a medium that works. It needs investment, it needs thought, it needs leadership, uh, it needs talent, I completely agree. And those are the things that the industry needs to work on. And I know people at times, people like some, some agencies are doing a lot in building talent as well and building this industry um, as it goes forward. Uh, <coughs> on that, um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, you just heard that India in India is five percent uh, spending on OOH. Mark my words, by the year 2020 in India, we did leading OOH spenders somewhere between the last 26, 15, 17 percent. Mark my words, in the next four years, that's going to happen. So OOH is really going to come and come big. Yeah. Wonderful on that Thank positive you. note, and I think we should wrap up this panel with a very loud round of applause. An exciting session here, and um, we got uh, some very involved. Uh, Audiences here also, what I'd like to definitely mention is that there is some great work which is being done as far as our home industry is concerned. And the awards tonight are going to be felicitating some of the best talent, some of the best work done in the last year. So you want to watch out for the kind of stuff that's going to be played out here on the screen here tonight. Um, I also like to take this opportunity to thank our speakers here. I'd like to invite them on stage, Mr. Ketan Lakhani, Director of Oriental Cine Advertising Private Limited, to hand over a token of appreciation on behalf of the Exchange for Media Group. Dr. Lal, I'd request you to please come up on stage as well for, for being felicitated by Mr. Lakhani and along with the rest of the panelists. Could we have our mentors on stage, please? platform, disruptive thinking, and of course, talent, and a lot of great stuff that we're going to be seeing here tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Lal, Mr. Jain, Mr. Chakravarti, Mr. Kapoor, Mr. Shah, Mr. Anand, Dr. Singh, and of course, our session chair, Mr. Balakrishnan.